Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this session, we will be looking into nonlinear regression. So, nonlinear regression can be done by two methods. Uh, one is uh, using nonlinear least squares optimization, right. The other one is for some models, we can employ data linearization technique to convert the nonlinear model into a linear model. We will be looking into both of them. So, cases wherein it is possible to convert a nonlinear model into a linear regression problem using data linearization, we will do that. Right. For cases wherein it is not possible to convert into linear regression, uh, we will employ uh, nonlinear least square regression. So, now let us look into the nonlinear regression. Right. So, let us say we are given this x and y data. Let us say we have given we are we have been given this x and y data and we are required to uh, fit this model y is equal to c e power a x. So, y is given x is given. Right. So, now we need to fit this model. Uh, basically, we basically we need to find out the what is the C value and A value such that this model would best, best represent the data that we have. So, we apply the same concept again, right. So, sum of square of residual. So, your observed data point is y i, the model is C e power A x i, where x i uh, is the value of the ith value of the independent variable. So, this is the error associated with the ith point, square it and then sum it up. So, that is our objective uh, function, right. So, now our job is to find out the value of c and a such that if you do dou s r by dou a uh, and equate it to 0, similarly determine dou s r by dou c and equate it to 0. Again, over here uh, you need to carefully differentiate it. So, 2 times this expression and then you are differentiating with respect to a. So, x i would be a constant. So, x i e power a x i. So, remember uh, the differentiation of e power m x is m e power m x, right. Again, uh, here remember m is the constant. So, in this case x i is known, right. So, what is unknown here was x, we were differentiating with respect to x, here we are differentiating with respect to a. So, that is why you have this uh, c into x i, not a, right. So, this if you calculate dou s r by dou a and dou s r by dou c, you will end up with two equations equated to 0, we will end up with two equations and in this case these two equations are not linear and those are non-linear equations, right, in terms of a and c. So, you can apply uh, any uh, technique that you know, uh, for example, newton raphson method to solve those equations, right, two equations into one unknowns, if you solve them you will get the value of a and c. Uh, that is how we can uh, fit the model. Uh, so, for example, if this is our data set, right, and if you solve uh, these two equations, right, we will end up with uh, c is equal to 1.61 and a is equal to 0.38, right. Uh, we will not be showing you how to exactly solve this nonlinear equation uh, because we assume that uh, you would have done that in uh, your first year of uh, engineering, right. So, uh, we will quickly show you how to uh, do that in MATLAB, right. So, for those of you who are, uh, for those of you who are new to MATLAB, we will have a separate video wherein you will be able to understand the same thing, how to solve nonlinear equations. Over here, we will quickly brush through. So, the CLC as you know will help you to clear the command window clear will remove all the variables, uh, clear the variables from the MATLAB workspace, right. So, here we are defining a, a function handle. So, the name of the function handle is fun, f u n, right. It is a function handle, right. So, prob is the function. So, we have written, the problem is going to be stated in a separate function file known as prob, right. And that name of, the name of that function is being assigned to this variable fun. 
So that is why we have the symbol at the rate symbol over here. So fun is now a function handle. So whenever we access fun, we will be actually accessing this function prob. Right? So for solving uh, nonlinear equations in MATLAB, you can use this fsol command. Right? For fsol, we need to give the equations that we want to solve and the uh, initial starting point. So here we have two variables. So here we are going to arrange uh, in this format that the first variable is going to be A and the second variable is going to be C. You could choose the other way, but we have chosen this, this way and we will be consistent uh, it throughout. We will be consistent it with throughout. right? So we are giving a guess value of a starting value of A to be 1 and a starting value of 0.5 to C. So these are the two, in the function file, we are going to return the value of the two equations. right? So for solving, for using fsol, uh, the equation should be in this form, f of x is equal to 0. So if we have two equations, both the equations right hand side has to be 0. So whatever we have on the left hand side is to be uh, given to the equation. right? So remember this is our equation. These are the two equations that we have. right? So z is what uh, we will get from fsol uh, when it is solving. right? So the first, vari the first value of z would be a because that is the notation which we have taken and that is the order in which we have given the starting point. right? So the first value of z is going to be a, the second value of z is going to be c. right? So once inside the function we have decoded it and then these two expressions are nothing but the left hand side of these two equations. right? So here if we see uh, x is a vector, y is a vector. So we use this dot operator x dot star y and this e power a x i is going to be n times depend uh, for n values of x. So again a dot operator dot star exponential of a, power, a, a star x minus c is a constant. right? And the, because of this summation we have this sum. So some function will help us to sum all the values. Right? So this x i is uh, this x vector x, right? this vector x and then uh, we have this e power 2 a x i, so exponential of 2 into a into x and since this is going to be a vector again, we use this dot operator. Similarly, we have written this second function. right? So this is the first function, this is the second function. Now if we run this uh, code, right? it will repeatedly, uh, it will access this function file multiple times right? and uh, at the end of it, it will give us these two values, x is equal to 0.38 and uh, 161 right so since we had for we had used this convention that the first value is a the second value is c uh, a is equal to 0.38 and c is equal to uh, 1 1.61 right so those of you who do not know matlab maybe this part uh, you may not be comfortable with this part but that is fine uh, the rest of the discussion is not going to be dependent on this one so it's totally fine if you have not uh, got this matlab uh, section. Right? Another way to solve this nonlinear regression problem, so sometimes this is possible to do. right? So our model was y is equal to c into e, e power a x. Right? So what we can do is we can take ln on both sides. So ln y plus e, equal to ln c plus uh, a x ln e. Right? So ln e is 1, so we will have only a x. So now if we see this model, right? So y is known, right? So in this case, remember x and y were given. So y is known. So you can cal, so we can calculate ln of y, right? So let us call that as capital. Uh, let us denote it with the uppercase y. So if this lowercase y is given, we can calculate the uppercase y using this transformation. Uh, let uppercase x be uh, the lowercase x, right? So what we are doing is we are equating it to y is equal to um, this is a0 plus a1x. Right? So we are basically plotting, we are converting it to, into a linear regression problem. Right? So the uh, uppercase x is nothing but the values which we get directly, only the y has to be transformed. And when we solve, what we will get is uh, a0 and a1. The a1 would directly correspond to this uh, a uh, in our model, whereas the a0 which we get is not uh, is not does not represent c 
but we need to take the exponential of a naught to actually get the value of c right. So, here what we are doing is the nonlinear model which we have we are doing data linearization to convert into a linear form and then we can apply uh, the same general linear least squares which we discussed right. So, in this case for uh, y is equal to a 1 x plus a naught uh, the z value is nothing but 1 1 1 right because we have a constant coefficient and the second vector is nothing but the x values right and z transpose is the transpose of this right. So, we can either use this to solve or we can use this to solve right. So, in this case uh, remember this is capital Y summation of capital summation of uppercase Y and uppercase Y is to obtain from uh, this transformation. Similarly, uh, after solving we will get a naught and a 1 to get c we need to again use this expression. So, let us consider that we have been given uh, data uh, let us consider we have been given this data right. So, there are 5 data points uh, where x is the independent variable y is the dependent variable as of now ln of y is not given right. So, ln y is not given we will come to that why we are finding ln y right. So, the model that is given is y is equal to c exponential a power x right. So, either we can solve it uh, using nonlinear regression or what we can do is we can take ln on both sides right. So, ln y is equal to a x plus ln c. So, ln y can be represented by capital Y right. So, we will use uppercase y as ln y x let us say is the same variable x. So, we are basically comparing it to y is equal to a naught plus a 1 x right. So, here if we see this is a constant term right this is the independent variable it has a constant right this is the dependent variable term right. So, we can calculate y we can calculate x. So, a 1 is nothing but capital A and a naught is l n c. So, we are comparing this this model with this model. So, if we use this variable transformation this model will boil down to this one. Right. So, using general linear least square regression we know that the solution for this problem is z transpose z into a is equal to z transpose y where z is uh, a column of 1s right because we have a constant coefficient term and the x 1 variable stacked all the endpoints stacked like this as second column right. So, and then once we know z we can calculate z transpose similarly we can calculate z transpose y right. So, if we apply this solution uh, to this problem right. So, our z matrix will be a column of 1s there are 5 data points. So, 5 rows and then this independent variable is to be directly stacked over here because we do not need any transformation of that right. Uh, uppercase x is nothing but the lowercase x. Once we have z we can calculate what is z transpose and we can calculate what is z transpose z right. So, z transpose z in this case would be this and z transpose y would be 6.2 and 16.29 right or we could have employed this one n sigma x sigma x i sigma x i square i varying from 1 to n right sigma y sigma y i x i. So, either we can use z transpose z into z trans into a is equal to z transpose y or we could have used this in both cases we will get the uh, same coefficient matrix and right hand side vector right. So, if we solve that we will get a naught is equal to 0.46 and a 1 is equal to 0.39. Remember what we are interested is in this c and this uppercase a right. So, now that we know a naught right. So, we can calculate what is c uh, using this relation that we know that a a naught is equal to ln c. So, c So, c can be calculated from that uh, expression a naught is equal to ln c right. So, c we can calculate and a 1 is nothing but the value of the constant coefficient a in this original model right. So, a is, a is directly equal to a 1 because of this transformation. So, a is equal to 0.39 c is equal to 1.58. So, our model is y is equal to uh, c 1.58 e power a x 0.39 x. So, this is our model right. So, what was a non-linear model? Uh, we used data linearization to convert into a linear model right. In this case it happened to be simple linear least square right. So, we can either use this 
formula or we can use that analytical solution z transpose z into a is equal to z transpose y and solve for the coefficients of a right and then if there is a data transformation we need to appropriately uh, do the data transformation to get the original model coefficients. So, this is an example for nonlinear least squares using data linearization. So, some of the other examples for linearization, uh, these are three other examples wherein uh, we can linearize. So, the actual model is y is equal to alpha 1 e power beta 1 x, right. So, x and y is given, the, our task is to find out alpha 1 and uh, beta 1. So, if we transform this, so if we take ln on both sides, right, in this expression if we take, uh, it will be ln y is equal to ln uh, alpha 1 plus beta 1 x ln e, right. So, this is going to be 1. The regression that we are doing is between ln y, right. So, let us say that is this uppercase y, uh, ln alpha, uh, ln alpha 1 will be the intercept, right and the slope will be beta 1, right, and uh, there is no transformation in x. So, if we are to solve this model, this nonlinear regression problem, we can actually do a data linearization and actually work with ln alpha and x. Right? Over here in the second model, if you see, it is y is equal to alpha to x power beta 2. So, here we can take log y is equal to log alpha 2 plus beta 2 log x, right. So, log y let us say it is uppercase y, uh, log alpha 2 will be our intercept plus beta 2 would be our slope, log x let us say it is uppercase y. So, we perform a regression between log x, uh, between, uh, log x and log y or uppercase x and uh, this uppercase y. So, the regression that we are doing is in, the, in, this, in this space uh, over here. Uh, so, over here uh, what we can do is, we can take a reciprocal. So, if the model is like this, y is equal to alpha 3 x by beta 3 plus x, we can take a reciprocal of this, right. So, if we take a reciprocal of that, what we will have is 1 by y is equal to uh, beta 3 plus x divided by alpha 3 x, right. So, this will be 1 by y is equal to beta 3 by alpha 3 x plus 1 by alpha 3, right. So, this will be 1 by y let us say it is uppercase y, 1 by x let us say beta 3 by alpha 3 is let us say uh, 1 by x is cap, uh, uppercase x, right, plus 1 by alpha 3. So, this will be our intercept, beta 3 by alpha 3 will be our slope. Right. So, here we are working with uppercase x and uppercase y, where uppercase x is 1 by x and uppercase y is 1 by y. So, this is one way wherein we can convert a nonlinear regression problem into linear regression problem, right. So, some of the other examples are given over here, right. So, these are taken from uh, Matthews and Finks. So, all these figures have been taken from uh, Chapra and Connell, uh, numerical methods by uh, Chapra and uh, Kernel. So, these are some of the other examples for nonlinear models which can be converted into linear. I would leave it to you for you to uh, figure out how to do it, right. You can look into this book, Numerical Methods Using MATLAB by Matthews and Finks. It has a uh, few more examples, right. So, for example, this particular model, if you see, uh, what you can do is y by l uh, is equal to uh, 1 by 1 plus a e power b x, right. So, we can take a reciprocal of this l by y is equal to 1 plus a e power b x, uh, l by 1 minus 1 is equal to a e power b x. So, ln of l by y minus 1 is equal to ln a plus b x ln e, right. So, in this case, uh, the unknown coefficients are a and b, right. l is known, l is given. Right. So, this can be calculated, right. This is let us say a naught plus uh, a 1 x. So, a 1 is nothing but b, a naught is nothing but ln and y is nothing but this expression, right. So, we know how to solve this both linear and nonlinear regression, right. So, for linear regression, uh, once we apply the stationary conditions, 
the non-linear optimization problem got converted into a set of solving a set of simultaneous linear equation. For the non-linear models that we discussed uh, as part of this session, uh, it turned out uh, it got converted into a set of simultaneous non-linear equations, right? So, and we also have seen that some of the non-linear models can also be converted into uh, linear model using data linearization. Thank you.